Welcome to the fifth segment on muscular dystrophies. In this segment, we are going to discuss a heterogeneous cluster of relatively rare diseases known as the congenital muscular dystrophies. This group includes mutations to a variety of seemingly unrelated proteins, have varying degrees of severity, and may include other organ systems. The one thing that ties these conditions together is the remarkably early onset of symptoms and their similar presentation in this early phase. There are literally dozens of identified diseases that fall within this category, and the point of the segment is not to provide you a comprehensive discussion of each. As we said, they are relatively rare conditions not commonly encountered in the clinic. The purpose is to briefly introduce you to this class of muscular dystrophies to complete your overview of the topic, describe the common presentation pattern for this group, and identify a couple of the more common variants. The term congenital muscular dystrophy is used to describe a heterogeneous group of diseases that typically have an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. The precise protein that is encoded is highly variable. In some instances, it can be structural proteins, such as certain collagens and integrins. In other instances, the mutation involves glycosylation proteins. Unlike other forms of muscular dystrophy, the mutations are not limited to the dystrophin-associated glycoprotein complex. Proteins associated with the endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, and nucleus have all been identified as belonging to the CMD family of disorders. There is also some variability in the presentation pattern. While skeletal muscle abnormalities are present in all instances, other organ systems, including cardiovascular and central nervous system, are affected in some, but not all, of the disorders. Additionally, in some cases, the patient's condition will progressively deteriorate throughout life, while in others it will stabilize at an early age. The accompanying slide provides a proposed classification system for many of the CMD variants identified. Again, this is not posted for memorization, but to give a perspective on the number of gene mutations that can be classified as congenital muscular dystrophies and the variability in these mutations. Collectively, a total of 4.7 cases of CMD would be expected in a population of 100,000 globally, which would suggest a little over 40 individuals in a city the size of Metro Buffalo are presently living with this condition. It is important to understand that there are variations in the frequency of certain congenital muscular dystrophies between different ethnic groups. Worldwide, the most common variant is myrosin deficient CMD, accounting for up to 40% of all cases in some countries. In Japan, however, a specific variant first described in 1960 is considered one of the most common autosomal recessive disorders in the country with an incident rate that approaches half of what is seen for descent muscular dystrophy. The disease was named Fukuyama CMD for the physician that first characterized it. Genetic studies identified the gene product, now called Fukutin, which is localized to the Golgi apparatus and is believed to be involved in glycosylation of alpha dystroglycan, a dystrophin-associated glycoprotein complex protein. Seeing as there is so much variability between these different conditions, it might seem surprising to see them grouped together. The common thread tying these conditions together is the remarkably early onset of muscular symptoms and muscle histology findings. Patients with congenital muscular dystrophy present with pronounced hypotonia very early in life. In many cases, reduced fetal movements have been noted in utero, suggesting that hypotonia begins prior to birth. This hypotonia continues in the neonate, and the term floppy baby syndrome has been adopted to describe the absence of muscle tone in this population. Children with CMD also demonstrate delays in motor milestones when compared to age match peers. Comorbidities also appear in the neonates, including joint contractures and cognitive impairments, but again, these would be variable and dependent on the specific nature of the mutation. Histological workup of the affected tissue will demonstrate similar pathology changes when compared to what is seen with Duchenne and Becker muscular dystrophy. Biopsy samples from CMD patients demonstrate intermingling of small and large fiber sizes, evidence of muscle damage and regeneration through the presence of centralized nuclei, and greater density of connective tissue surrounding the fibers. 
One notable distinction is a smaller number of unstained necrotic fibers over time when compared to more traditional forms of muscular dystrophy. As with limb girdle muscular dystrophy, immunohistochemical analysis of samples can help in identifying the protein of interest in CMD patients. Identifying the precise cause of the disease condition is important in order to identify potential comorbidities, improve treatment options, and more accurately predict the prognosis for the patient. As with Duchenne and Becker muscular dystrophy, there are no known cures for any of the CMDs, and treatment is focused on maintaining independence for as long as possible. A combination of physical therapy, orthopedic bracing, and spinal surgery can correct contractures and skeletal misalignments to maintain ambulation for as long as possible. Careful monitoring of respiratory function is also important in this population, as respiratory insufficiency is a common cause of mortality. Beyond these standard treatments, care for comorbidities is based on the nature of the disease. For mutations where cardiac complications are common, for example, cardiac function should be carefully monitored, and ACE inhibitors and beta blockers may be prescribed to stave off cardiomegaly. Ultimately, the prognosis is dependent on the specific mutation. In severe forms, such as with Walker-Wahlberg syndrome, the patient will die within the first few years of life, while in other non-progressive forms, the patient may experience a relatively normal lifespan. That concludes the segment on the congenital muscular dystrophies. In the next session, we'll examine one final class of dystrophies with an unusual pathophysiology in that they result from mutations not to the dystrophin-associated glycoprotein complex, but rather to proteins that make up the link complex, which forms a mechanical link between the nucleoskeleton and the cytoskeleton. These are the Emery-Dreyfus muscular dystrophies.